Hello everyone. So this is our final search algorithm video and it's kind of a neat one. We're going to talk about binary search in this video and binary search is pretty different. It is uh, certainly vastly different than sequential search and if this is you know only your second programming class it's a pretty clever algorithm and, and sort of unique in how it solves the problem of searching. Um, let's start just with a very high level overview of what we're going to do and uh, we're going to use Mario to help illustrate the point right so what I want you to do here at the beginning is just kind of get a broad sense for the strategy of this algorithm like what's it going to do okay so we are searching a list of elements like usual um, and suppose that these, you know, question mark blocks that Mario is faced with are the list in question. Now Mario is your algorithm, he's your computer, he has no idea where the thing is. What he is looking for is the mushroom that is in one of these blocks, right? Um, so the question is, what is the fastest way for him to kind of isolate where the mushroom is? Well, in binary search, he employs a slightly different strategy. He could go block by block and just kind of check each one. But with binary search, he's going to take advantage of the list itself to get a little more information about where the mushroom might be. So what he will do is he's going to jump to the middle first. Okay? And when he gets to the middle, he finds out that, hey, the mushroom is not in that block you know over to the left it's definitely not there the list kind of gives him that information okay how does it do it we'll explain it here in a second but he knows for sure that it's not on that side right it could be on it, the right side uh, it may not be on the right side it, it is possible that the mushroom is not here anywhere but he has learned that it is definitely not on that left hand side okay so now where is he going to jump next time well his goal is to eliminate as many possible locations as he can at one time because he wants to reduce the number of blocks he has to search through well if when he jumps again he jumps to the middle of this right hand side and when he jumps to the middle he learns that you know this approximately half of the blocks don't have it okay it's just something he learns by jumping so the first time he learned that the block uh, the mushroom couldn't be in this half so he jumped over here and then he learned well it can't be in this half of this part and so where does he jump now well again he's trying to eliminate as many things as possible at one time so he jumps to the middle and ah by luck he kind of finds the the mushroom that he's looking for now he didn't uncover or he didn't examine each and every block instead he took a big jump and figured out hey the mushroom is not in this part it must be up here All right but this is how kind of binary search's strategy works he is trying to chop down and what binary search does is it chops down the amount of items you have to search in half and then in half again and then in half again until you eventually either find the thing or you determine that the thing is not in the list okay so binary search what is required to make binary search work well what we said was that Mario was able to get some information out of the list um, the way that he gets information out of the list when you code this is that you have to have the items be sorted just like in the smart sequential search um, if the items are sorted you can make certain claims for example when you jump to the middle of the list you know that in a sorted list everything to the right of where you jumped is bigger than the item where you jumped and the item everything to the left of the list where you jumped is smaller than the place where you jumped so you can use that information to kind of decide hey where if this thing exists in the list which way do I need to go do I need to go left or do I need to go right okay. we'll go through a concrete example here in just a minute binary search is only useful 
if we have random access in big O of one time. So what, what does that mean? Um, when we talked about the array-based list, we said you could access any element by its index, like my list sub 45, in big O of one time, right? Um, because of the way that array-based arithmetic works. It's big O of one time. For your linked list that you've now implemented, you cannot randomly access an element of the list in big O of one time. It's big O of n because you can't just jump there through math. You have to start at the head and walk your way down to the item, kind of like you have to do in pop. You start at the head and you walk your way a number of times. So binary search only works in an array uh, context. So uh, for a linked list, you're kind of stuck using a sequential search. Binary search is how you look for a name in a phone book or a definition in the dictionary. You don't know exactly where the thing is in the book, but if you like open it to the middle, and you're like, oh, I'm at you know, letter K in the alphabet or letter L in the alphabet. I'm looking for the definition of Frankfurter. Okay, well, F comes before L. Let me go halfway in between the beginning of the book and the middle of the book. Am I in the Fs yet? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. And you just can, it, a really efficient strategy is to just kind of keep splitting them in half, okay? We call this approach of shrinking the problem, right? Because that's really what you're doing. You're shrinking how many items you have to search by cutting them in half each time, right? If the value is higher than the midpoint, you only have to search the top half of the list. This is called a divide and conquer strategy. Make the problem smaller. It's a strategy that appears a lot in computer science. And this is maybe the first example that you've encountered of a divide and conquer algorithm. Okay, so here is the algorithm itself. Uh, this is on your search handout. Note here the first pre precondition to this algorithm. You have a list of objects and the elements from 0 to n minus 1 are in ascending order. So we have a sorted list, right? Here's the algorithm. It's got it's a little more complex. It's still driven by a while loop and it's got some if else inside. Um, but it's it's actually not that bad if you step through it slowly. So what do we do? How does this work? Again, I'm going to give you a, you know, just kind of wrap your head around conceptually how it works. Don't worry about these details over here just yet. We will work through a concrete example in a second. Suppose we've got a 10 element array based list here, right? This says, uh, and these elements are sorted, okay, from smallest to largest. Suppose we're searching for 23. The essence of the binary search algorithm here, if we just kind of scoot over to this side, it's going to chop down the space where it has to start, where it has to search. So initially, it says, all right, how big is the space? Well, the first index of my search space is the first element when I start. In the last index, I'm looking at these two variables here, first and last, I'm going to set first here and last here because I need to search the whole list. Now, uh, we get into our while loop and our while loop is what's going to do the jumping of Mario or the chopping down of the search space. And instead of Mario, we have a variable called mid. Okay? We set mid equal to first plus last divided by two, the integer value you get out of that. So the mid index is, again, somewhere in the middle of your search space, somewhere directly in between, near the middle, of the first and the last. Okay, So when we start this, okay, the first iteration of this loop, we're searching the whole list. So our low end, our first end is here, our high end is here, and the middle is this guy right here. Zero, this is index 0, this is index 9, 0 plus 9 is 9, divided by 2 is 4, 4 and a half, but we're only taking the integer, so index 4 is right here. So this blue square is the mid. Okay. Now we ask the question, is the value at the middle 
less than, greater than, or equal to the thing we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for 23. So, given that this value, the middle value, is less than 23, and given that this list is sorted, where must 23 be in this list? It must be above 16 somewhere. Right? Now we look at the list, we see where it is. The computer doesn't know where it is when this algorithm is running. But the computer does know that if, 16, or if 23 is in this list, it must be up here somewhere. Right? So what it, because the list is sorted. So then what we do is we shrink the search space by moving this guy up here. Okay? So we know for sure that 23 can't be down here. So we're going to shrink our search space so we're only looking in this range right here. Okay? We take the middle point of this range, which is 56, and we ask the question again. Is, is this 23? Well, no, it's not. Okay, is it less than or greater than 23? Well, 23 is less, or excuse me, is 23 less than or greater than 56? It's less than. So what do we do? We move the high end. We're going to shrink our search space again. We know it's not up here, so let's move this high end down here. Okay, and we do. All right, we're going to loop back again. Now our search space is really small. We only need to search these two items. So we jump to the middle of these two items, and that index is 23. Aha, that is our target value. And so we have found it. If it's equal, you know, if the middle is equal to the target value that we're looking for, we're looking for 23, then we found it. We got it. Binary search worked. But notice, you know, how many steps we did. We did one comparison, two comparisons, three comparisons, right? Not very many. Right? And if we get this in a much bigger list, like 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 400 million, uh, it turns out that the number of jumps we have to do is pretty small, regardless of how big the list is. Okay, So let's do this algorithm by hand. Um, again, I would normally be doing this on the board or on a sheet of paper, but I don't have it. Um, so we're going to trace this algorithm. And going back to page three of your handout. I'm going to trace it on this uh, array base list here and we're going to look for these values again. All right and we're going to walk through each one of these in turn. Um, now uh, it's going to be a little tedious. It's okay if you think you know it but you must you must know this algorithm. Okay this is really just one of those quintessential algorithms it's not overly complicated, but it's got a neat concept. This is something that you will get asked about on many job interview questions, right? You gotta know how this thing works. It's really clever. And it's also the strategy, this divide and conquer approach and the way that this algorithm works. It's the basis for a lot of other algorithms you will encounter in your upper level computing classes, okay? So understand it conceptually first and then be able to trace the algorithm itself. So let's trace the algorithm itself. All right, so we are going to look for 332 in this list. Now remember, for binary search to work, our list must be sorted and we can only do this on an array based list because we have to get to the index fast. If we can't get to it in constant time, there's no benefit to binary search. You might as well just use sequential search. In fact, binary search would be worse than sequential search on a linked list. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do we do here? We're looking for 332. Let's trace our algorithm. A is the list of objects sorted in ascending order. N is the number of elements in A. So how many elements are there here? There are eight in our example. Whoops, get this here, there we go. We're gonna look for our target. So let's start out by looking for 332. And we set found equal to false, okay. All right, now, these variables here, first, last, and mid, these are the ones that do the work. Before, we just had kind of like this location variable that was doing the work. Now we've got three variables that are doing the work. We set first equal to zero, according to our algorithm. We set last equal to n minus one, which is seven. 
and we set. All right, now we go into our loop. This is the control loop that tells us when to stop searching, when to stop jumping around the list, when to stop narrowing that search space. Okay. While first is less than or equal to last, first and last, um, oh, sorry, let me move this here. So last is going to be up here now, right? First is here, last is here, according to the algorithm. So we'll do it visually and we'll do it with the variable values. While first is less than last, it is, less than or equal to last, excuse me, and not found, okay? We haven't found anything yet. Set the middle equal to first plus last, 0 plus 7 divided by 2. Okay, 0 plus 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half, uh, but we're taking integer division here, so we're going to set mid equal to 3. Okay, so that's 0 plus 7 divided by 2, right? That's what we're doing right here, um, 3. All right, now we've jumped to the middle. Now we ask our question that lets us narrow down the search space. Is the target, we're looking for 332 here, less than A sub mid? Uh, no, 332 is not less than A sub mid. So we come down to this else statement. If target is greater than A sub mid, well, 332 is greater than 8. Okay. So what do you do? Set first equal to mid plus 1. Okay. Mid is right here. So I set first equal to mid, which is 3, plus 1, 4. So I move first right here, just above. Why? Because the algorithm knows that this list is sorted. Because this list is sorted, it knows that 332, if it exists in the list, it must be up here somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to set my search space which is defined by first and last up here. Okay. All right, so now what does it do? Else if we did this statement, now we come back to our loop. Now notice mid hasn't moved yet, right? It hasn't moved yet. Mid only moves at the beginning of the loop. So this is our current state. We have looped back around. While first is less than or equal to last, it is, and not found, haven't found it yet, Set mid equal to first plus last divided by 2. Okay. Well, first is 4, we're at index 4. Last is 7. 4 plus 7 is 11. Divided by 2 is 5 and a half. Okay. 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. We're interested only in the integer part of that. So mid becomes 5. All right. Now we ask our question again. Right, here's the, the we do our comparison, right? So we've done one comparison so far. Right, now we're going to do another comparison where we are comparing our target to this item. Is our target less than this item? No. Is our target 332 greater than this item? Why, yes, it is. So what do we do? We set, if the target's greater than the middle item, we set first greater equal to mid plus 1. Okay, and we loop back around. Okay, first and last are pretty close. Notice that last hasn't moved yet, right? Last hasn't moved yet. All right, so we loop back around. First, while first less than or equal to last, it still is. Okay, we set mid equal to first plus last divided by 2. First is 6, plus 7, that's 13, divided by 2, 6 and a half. Okay. All right. So mid is now here. So it's stacked on top of first or below first. First and mid are pointing to the same thing. That's okay. Now, ask our question. Is the target 332 less than A sub mid? Nope. Nope, it's not. Okay. Target is greater than a sub mid. Yes, it is. So we set first equal to mid plus one. All right, we're all stacked up here again. Okay, so now first is equal to last and mid is one behind it. We loop back around. Now check our while loop again. 
is first, oops, sorry, and we did another comparison, so we've done three comparisons so far. Is first less than or equal to last? Yes, seven is less than or equal to seven. Okay, first and last and mid are all indexes in this list, okay, not the value in the list itself. Okay. Set mid equal to first plus last divided by two, seven plus seven is 14 divided by two is seven. All right, so we set mid equal to seven. So now we're all stacked up here, getting kind of hairy, getting kind of busy. Let me move this guy down just a little bit. All right, so everybody's there. Well, now you know what's gonna happen, right? If target is less than mid, A sub mid, it's not less than it. 332 is not less than 332. 332 is not greater than 332. So it must be equal to. If it's not less than and it's not greater than, it must be equal to. So we set found equal to true at this point. Okay. All right. Now what? We exit our loop and come back up. While first is less than or equal to last, it actually still is, right? And not found. Ah, but we have found it. So we break out of our loop. We're done. Shh, jump down here. If not found, set mid equal to none. Well, we, we did find, right? Found is true. So this will not execute. And so we return mid. Okay, so in the case of this binary search, we are returning the index where the item lives at. Okay, so and 332 does in fact live at uh, slot 7. We also did one more comparison here because we compared the target to this value. So all in all, we have done four comparisons here to get um, 332, right? Whew, okay, so let's do another example. Again, it's really important that you understand how this code works. Um, we'll try and go a little bit faster this time. So we start out, let's reset everything. Now we're gonna look for 91, okay? We're gonna reset found to false. We start with first equal to zero and last equal to n minus one, all right? And now we set mid, mid equal to first plus last divided by two. So first plus last divided by two, that's seven divided by two, which is three. Okay, so mid is three at this point, and we ask our question. We're looking for 91, right? Let's maybe skip over the details and let's just focus on moving these markers here, okay? And working in the visual list. Is mid, is a sub mid, is eight less than, or excuse me, is the target 91 less than eight? No, okay is the target greater than eight. Well, 91 is greater than eight, okay? So we set first equal to mid plus one, okay? So we are gonna, we are moving these guys around the middle variable according to what we learned by comparing the target to this value, to the value pointed at by the middle variable, okay? So we bump up first again, and we've done one comparison. But we still haven't found it yet, and first is still less than last, so we need to loop again, okay? So we're gonna set mid equal to four plus seven, first plus last, divided by two. Four plus seven is 11, divided by two is five. Okay, so mid goes here, right? And we ask our question again, we do a comparison. So this is our second comparison. Is our target, 91, 91 is our target, right? Is our target less than a sub mid? Why, yes it is, it is. 91 is less than a sub mid, which is one, two, three. So what do we do? If the target is less than a sub mid, you move last one behind, one to the left of mid, okay? Last gets mid minus one. Okay, mid minus one is four, because mid is here, right? Mid, first, and last hold indexes of the array, not the value that's at the index, okay? Important point to keep in mind. All right, so we loop back again. We're, notice that in this loop, we are either moving first 
or last, or we've found it. Okay, so that's what the loop does. Well, we gotta move the mid too, but we're moving the mid, the first, or the last, or we found it. All right, so we loop around again. While first, less than, or equal to last, it is equal, and not found, we haven't found it. Set mid equal to first plus last divided by two. Well, first is four, last is four, mid is gonna be eight divided by two, which is also four, so right here. Okay, so we are kind of all together now, all together and happy. Now do the comparison. Is our target less than this? Mm -mm. Our target is this, right? So after one more comparison, after three comparisons, we have found it. We found it, set found equal to true, right? It's there, mid is there, it found the target. So we are done. We found it, we exit out of our loop, uh, we return the index of the item, okay? All right, so let's do it one more time with 22 because it's important that you understand how this algorithm understands when it doesn't, when it knows the item is not in the list, okay? So let's reset our algorithm. This time we're gonna look for 22. Found is false, we're resetting. First is slot zero, last is n. Uh, minus one, which is seven. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's do our loop. First is less than last and not found. We set mid equal to first plus last divided by two. So seven divided by two is three. Okay, so mid goes here. And then ask the question. Our target is 22. Is 22 less than eight? No. Is 22 greater than eight? Yes. So we got a we know that we need to look above mid. We need to look in this range up here, okay? So we've done one comparison so far, right? All right, we loop around again. First less than equal last. Yep, haven't found it. Nope, time to jump, okay? First plus last is 11. Four plus seven is 11. Divided by two is six or five and a half. So we go to five. Okay, all right, so mid is five now. And we ask our question, is our target less than one, two, three? It is, our target is less than one, two, three. So we need to restrict, we need to move our search space one to the left of the mid. Okay, last goes to mid minus one. So last is now, Four, oh, and I forgot to update first. So first and last are both in the same place now. We've done one more comparison, okay? Now we loop around again. Each loop is a jump. Each time you jump mid, that's part of the loop, okay? So we've jumped twice now. All right, is first less than or equal to last? Yeah, so we continue with our loop. We still haven't found it. We continue inside the loop. We're gonna do a jump. All right. Mid is first plus last divided by two. Okay, so mid goes here. Four plus four divided by two is four. All right, so now everybody's all stacked up. Okay, pay attention now. Now we have to ask our question again in the algorithm. Is target less than a sub mid? Our target is 22, a sub mid is 91. Yes, the target is less than a sub mid. So what do we do? We set last equal to mid minus one. Okay. Ah, last is now moved down here. Okay, so this is a strange scenario. The last has crossed over the first. Okay, that's what's happened. We've chopped our search space down so much that eventually we ran out of places to search. We crossed, all right? Now, we're in our loop. We've just done this block. Else, 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 we jump up here. While first, less than or equal to last. Sorry, we did one more comparison here. First is no longer less than or equal to last, right? First is greater than last. So our loop terminates. We come down here. If not found, 
Did we find it? No, false. Not false is true. We did not find it. Set mid equal to none and return mid. So we didn't find it. Okay. How many comparisons did it take to tell us that the thing wasn't in there? It took three comparisons. All right. So kind of cool, right? Remember what kind of the worst case scenario was with sequential search. With a plain old sequential search, you had to go through the whole list. For binary search, I only had to go through three things. Um, smart sequential search uh, would have been even more, right? Because we would have had to look at one, two, three, four, five things. So there's actually an improvement here um, for searching on uh, for an item that doesn't exist in this list. So that's how it works, right? We jump mid and we decide is the thing greater or less than where I jump to. We And then we shrink our search space by moving first or last, depending on what we learned. And if we find the thing, if the thing is in the list, eventually mid will be at the thing we are looking for. If the thing is not in the list, then first and last will cross over one another and we know it can't possibly be in there. That's the essence of how the binary search algorithm works. Okay, So that's, let's answer this question. Okay. When do you know the target is not present? We know the target is not present when last is less than first. That, that's when they have crossed over. Let me highlight this over here. They have crossed, right? Now, given a list of size n, what is the maximum number of comparisons required to determine if the target is in the list or not? Well, that's kind of a tricky question, right? Because before we have only been dealing with um, the number of items as, well, we've only, our best algorithm has been big O of N, right? Because the best algorithm in the worst case would always have to look at every item in the list. This one doesn't though. This one does not have to look at every item in the list because it is chopping the list down with each jump in it, okay? And so the question is actually not how many items are in the lists per se, but how many times, what's the maximum number of times you have to chop down before you either find the thing or you determine that it's not there, okay? So one way you can kind of think of this is how many times do you have to divide by two? Because that's what you're doing. You're dividing the list in half. We jump halfway between the remaining list. Okay. So what's the maximum number of times? Start with a, a list of four items. How many times can you divide that list by two before you get either one or zero? Well, four divided by two is two. Two divided by two is one we get to one after two divisions. Okay. What about a list of size mm, eight? Well, eight divided by two is four. Four divided by two is two. Two divided by two is one. Three divisions and we're down to one item. Okay, there's definitely a pattern here. Okay, well if we have 16 items, well 16 divided by two is eight. Eight divided by two is four. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Four divisions with a list of 16 items to get down to one item, right? Because that's what we're doing, we're chopping that search space in half. Four divisions. Okay, so maybe you're picking up on a pattern. What is 2 to the 4? It's 16. What's 2 to the 3? It's 8, right? We did four divisions to get down from 16 items to one. We do three divisions to get from eight items down to one, three divisions by two, et cetera, et cetera. So if I had a board that worked in front of me, right, what we have seen is that there's a power of two. That's because we're dividing and conquering, because we are dividing by two. How many times can you divide a number by two before you get one? 
Well, if you if we had there's a function, a mathematical function that will tell us this, and that is the logarithm, log base two. Okay, how many times can we divide by two? This is a binary search is a log base two algorithm. Okay, um, so what is the maximum number of comparisons? Um, the exact number depends on the data. How many items are in the list and what's your target? Okay, so I can't actually give you a very precise number of comparisons here. But what I will tell you is that it is big O log base two of n. Okay, so let me kind of pretty this up a little bit and make it so uh, this one, right? Sometimes you see this written as big O log of n. Um, log with LG with no subscript in computing typically means log base 2. Okay, so log base 2 of n. Right? Um, what's the logarithm function? I refer you back to your trigonometry and calculus days, um, but it is a log base 2 algorithm. So let's compare this here. Okay, kind of cool. Right? We're not going to do the algorithmic analysis to prove that in this class, but it has to do with how many times can you divide n by 2. How many big items, right? You've got a list of n items. How many times can you chop it in half until you find the thing? That's what we're doing. We're dividing by 2 successively. And there's a logarithmic or a power of 2 part of that equation. Okay, So let's answer these questions. Binary search. If the target is present in the list, what's the best case search? Well, the best case, if the target is in the list, is, you know, let's kind of reset our algorithm. The best case, whoops, would be if the target is right in our first jump, right? If it's right here. If we're looking for eight, we jump one time, and lo and behold, we have found it. A sub mid, or excuse me, I keep moving the wrong. <laughs> I'm moving the wrong markers here. If A sub mid is equal to the item we're looking for, that's the best case scenario. One comparison. Okay. All right. Now, what's the worst case if the item is in there? Well, as I mentioned before, the worst case is how many times do you have to divide by two? The answer there is log base two of n. That's the worst case, okay? How many times do you have to chop it in half to find the thing? Um, and it's gonna be on that order. Again, the exact number of comparisons is going to depend. Um, it depends on how many items are in the list exactly, right? Because when I say it depends, I mean, it depends on the values in the list, and it depends on the target value. It only is going to change the number of comparisons by plus or minus one, but it it does matter, and it's based on the values of the data. So I can't give you a precise answer. It also depends on how you implement the code and the order you do things in. So, but it's real close to log base two of n. Okay, actually, I should put in here the floor function because that's what it really is. Um, the, 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 oh. Wow, the copy and paste is really angry with me right now. Thanks. Okay, here we go. It's actually the floor function, right? So if you take log base 2 of, say, 13, you're going to get a fraction. You're, you're taking the, the floor of that, okay? It's on this, it's in this range, right? Big O of N is orders of magnitude. So whether it's plus 1 or minus 1, we don't really care. It's on this order, okay? Um, worst case, all right, so the target is not present for binary search. How many comparisons do you do in the best case when the thing isn't there? Well, the best case would be that um, you have a list where you kind of, you, you still have to do a, a number of comparisons, right? Um, and there's no way around that when the thing is not here. Again, it depends on the size of the list, but the, the best case for when the item isn't on in the list is also this order, log base two of n. 
okay? Because you still have to do at least a minimum amount of jumping to figure out that the thing is not there, right? And we saw that here. Uh, that's the best case, I'm sorry. The worst case is the same. It's also log base two of n, okay? So this is actually, though, a really, really drastic improvement, okay? Worst case, n. What is, okay, so say you have a list of a billion items, okay? In the worst case of a sequential search or even a smart sequential search, you have to look at a billion items. You have to do a billion comparisons. That's a lot of comparisons. What is log base two of a billion? Uh, it is about 20, okay? 20 comparisons versus a billion comparisons, that's a big old difference, right? That's a lot. <laughs> so binary search is really fast, like really, really, really fast. Logarithmic algorithms are super fast compared to linear algorithms. And you can see this if you plot a log chart versus a linear chart. Linear algorithms grow, you know, like this, I guess like this. Log algorithms grow very slowly. They almost look flat. Right, so um, log algorithms are very cool, and this is your first one. Why is it log algorithm? Because it's dividing by two. It's chopping that search space in half every time. So this is a very cool algorithm. Know how it works. Um, all right, so let me go back to my slide and let's wrap up our discussion here. Okay, so to binary search or to sequential search. We just talked about how binary search has an enormous time efficiency, an improvement over sequential search. So, but you cannot always binary search and you don't always want to either. Sometimes you can't sort elements, right? Um, if you've got a list with integers and floats and strings in it, you can't sort that list because there's no way of comparing, of saying, oh yeah, five is less than the string Bob or 3.14 is less than the string UNCW. You can't sort a list like that, so you have to sequential search. Also, binary search and smart sequential search require the list to be sorted. Well, sorting is not cheap. Sorting, the best sorting algorithms are n times log n algorithms, right? So they're super linear. They're not great, right? They're okay, but they're not great, especially for large data sets. So does the cost of sorting the list outweigh the cost or outweigh the benefit of a binary search? Well, if you've got a small list like 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, 1,000, 10,000 items, almost certainly it's not worth it to sort that list. Just do a sequential search. Computer so fast, you're not going to see an appreciable difference. The other time when sorting is not worth it is if you have to sort many times. So say you've got a list that you, you do have a need to search through, right? Like maybe it's a list of students enrolled at your university and they're ordered by some sort of student ID number. If that list changes a lot, like new students come in, old students drop out, you're changing it like many times relative to the number of times you search. Well, every time you change a list, you have to resort it, or you have to put the item in order, which can be expensive for arrays, right? We have to work with arrays here. So if your list is changing a lot that you need to search, probably the cost of keeping it sorted is not worth it, okay? However, if you have a large list, and it's not gonna change very often, like, I don't know, the number of patients in a in a hospital maybe that only changes a couple of times a day um, and you're going to be searching it many times maybe another example would be a driver's license database that's used by the dmv or the police right there are not many new driver's licenses issued every day but are they searched a whole lot yeah they're searched by insurance companies by the police by fire by all sorts of people right um, so you do a ton of searches compared to sorting infrequently and how many people are in the database 
there's what 10 million people in North Carolina ish maybe more than that I'm probably off 30 million I think yeah it'll be expensive to sort one time but if you search that list and it, you only have to search in log base 10 of 30 million or log base 2 of 30 million is going to be in the range of 11 or 12 and you only have to do 10 or 12 comparisons every time you search that list yeah it's worth it it's worth it to sort it if you're doing thousands of searches per day okay so there's a trade-off here it's, and then it's the trade-off of is it worth it to sort this list to get that binary search to work or nah it's not worth it to sort it just do the linear search okay and we'll we will explore the costs of sorting in a later module so that's it big video sorry about that but I really want you to understand binary search thanks for sticking with it you'll definitely see it on quizzes and exams and all sorts of good stuff and job interviews so um, until next time uh, I will see you then <laughs>